Hey, it's Nige here from Hillsong Worship. How you doing? We're on the uh, No Other Name tour, and here we are in San Antonio. Fun. Looking forward to tonight. Just thought I'd take a couple of minutes and give you a quick gear rundown. So here we go. Just very quickly, let's start with the guitars. I've got two guitars out on the road. Obviously, I'd love to take ten, but um, due to weight restrictions, all that stuff, we take two. Um, so I've got my old faithful and trusted doozy here, the Star Player TV I've had for a few years. Absolutely love it, and also the Gretsch um, Deodet, and um, yeah, love them. So very quickly, signal flow. I plug my guitar into here. It comes into my pedal board. And I plug it into this little RC booster here, and um, I plug it into that. It serves for two different purposes. Um, one, it's a it's a buffer, and two, it's a bit of an EQ as well because both guitars sound a little different. So if I plug one guitar, I can quickly adjust the bass and treble, uh, and then if I plug the other one in, I can adjust it to those pickups and the gain structures, all that stuff. So from there, it goes down, down, down here. I'll come back to the pedal board, down into the rack, okay? So it comes in on the input here, the front of the switcher. This is the um, RJM FX Gizmo, which I absolutely love. And pretty much what it is, it's a, it's a true bypass um, switcher where all my pedals and all my effects are running through this. So in effect, uh, like what it is, is I can actually with a flick of a button on the pedal board, bring whatever pedal I want in and out of the loop. And um, I can have any combination of pedals. So I can have like, if I, I can go from a clean sound with a flick of a button and then with another hit of a button, I can bring in five or six pedals and change my delay times and my reverbs and all that sort of stuff, which is pretty cool. So yeah, so that's the input there and all my pedals are wired through this. So very quickly, this is my first pedal draw. Um, so it comes in from the RC booster, the signal chain comes into the compressor here. So this is a CMAT Mods uh, Signal Comp, which I absolutely love. Uh, there's, I've gone through, uh, this is the, these are the pedals that I'm using on this tour, and you'll probably find on another tour, I'll pull out some of the pedals and change it up. I'm always trying a few different things. But for now, I'm using this, so the signal flow goes to the Signal Comp, um, into this little Cusack Scream. And um, these are my, my Scarlet Love Overdrive pedals um, that I made with Sealer Effects. And I've got two of them at the moment, and they're both set to uh, different settings. One is like a clean boost setting that I've got here, and the other one's set to like the Plexi setting. And as you can see, on, I don't run too many gains. Like the, the gains are actually set quite low, the drives and I'll just layer them accordingly or have a couple of different combinations. Um, here's my Mulholland drive that I'll use for maybe some lead tones. Um, this is a spare cable that does nothing, so that'll go there. Um, the POG is sitting here, which I've had for a bit. Um, I'm not using it too much on the tour, but it's sitting in there. Back here you see like a pitch shifter delay and a DD5 and a DM2. I use these three uh, for like my reverse sounds and my ambient sounds. Um, I'll use, these two are in one loop, this is in a separate loop, and I'll use various combinations of these along with my other effects. So that's mostly the drives draw with some effects, and this is my other draw here. Okay, so I use uh, the Strymon, some of the Strymon gear, which I absolutely love. Uh, I've had this, this is the Strymon timeline where I get all my delays from, and um, this is the, the Mobius, which some of, uh, some of the modulation uh, effects that I use. And I don't use too many at the moment, but it's just really nice to have. Mostly use this in the studio. Um, and this is the reverb by uh, Eventide, Eventide Space. Um, heaps of people are encouraging me to get the, um, the Big Sky, just to keep it all striving, but I haven't done that yet. Um, this one's working fine, though. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, again, all these are MIDI controllable. Everything's... Everything's hooked up to the controller out there. And um, with a flick of a button, it'll change all my presets, all my delay times, my patches, the delay amounts, anything you want. Like any of these uh, buttons are attached to a, a, MIDI, um, a MIDI function. So, so yeah, it's really flexible. So with every song, um, I'll have different settings and it just saves a whole lot of tap dancing. So with the signal flow here, um, Everything is run through a line mixer, so out of the looper that you saw before, 
the signal comes through the line mixer here so I can have it, this is running in parallel so at any time if I turn off a delay the delays will trail off naturally and um, even if the pedals turned off for some unknown reason it won't kill my signal and um, so that's the line mixer down there that's the um, that's the uh, MIDI through box down there and um, this back here I don't know if you can really see it is um, it's a little it's uh, what controls my um, my volume it's a little it's a little volcano it's sitting just sitting under there uh, it's called a volcano by um, so can't remember the company actually but um, sound sculpture I think and that allows me to have to control the volume internally in the rack so I don't have to run my guitar signal into the rack and then run through another like 70 80 foot of cable back out and then back in it's very cool so it saves massive cable runs all right so this is my buffered split okay it's called a tone saver also by the the RJM company and uh, one side as you can see goes to um, back into the the interface that carries uh, sends all my signal uh, into the effects the other side is a buffered split which is a dry output and that goes um, straight to the interface so talking talking about the interface here this is made by um, the same guys that made my pedal um, the sealer the sealer guys in Australia and it's a fantastic it's a one-off um, they made for me and um, this is pretty much my patch to the outside world so here is the dry output um, here are the two post effects outputs left and right and um, I've got my tuner output here and my expression pedal that controls the volume and it gets patched into here so this is really cool you've got phase control so you can flip the phase depending on what amps you've got um, ground lifts I can flick it from stereo to mono, various buffering, um, it's really really cool. Jensen transformers inside so they're super quiet, they're super clean and it's just a really nice good strong signal. So um, so yes at the moment the dry output is getting fed into this quill to tone block that um, I'm trying out, the guys were very graciously gave this to me to try it for the tour. Um, it's fantastic actually. So this is just going straight XLR out into the system and it's my center dry channel and um, the front house guys can ride that up up and down as they please if they want to just poke me out a little bit more in the system without having without the signal getting lost with all the wet effects they can do that so really great tone it breaks up quite naturally um, yeah I like it it's the first time I'm using it and it's great so my left and right, right outputs go to um, a Vox and a matchless amp that are sitting right out the back. Don't be fooled by these. These, they sound great. They're plugged into PP1 and PP2. Pop plant 1 and pop plant 2 as I call it. But um, I can't be seen being outdone by all these keyboards on stage. I'm being out keyboarded at the moment and it just can't happen. So, so this is giving me like some false sense of security perhaps. Uh, but the amps that I'm actually using are way out the back and we can have a look at them later. But uh, let's quickly look at the pedal board. So back out here, here's the pedal board that um, is controlling the whole rig. So it's essentially, it's a MIDI controller and I can have all the songs, currently have all the songs in the tour programmed in here. So the first song that we do in the night, on the tour is the No, no Other Name. Um, no other name. I have I have my presets that I want for the song. So, like the bridge song with the with the lip, the line that I do in the bridge has these combinations of pedals. And if I want to clean up the sound, I can hit a button, and it takes whatever I want out of it. I'll obviously program this, and it's taken some time to program, but it works fantastic. I still can have it. I can. This here allows me to turn on. Uh, the individual pedals or the loops at any time I want. Okay, that just brings them in and out of the loop, and you'll, you'll be able to see it flashing on and off on the um, on the switcher there. Okay, various different combinations of it, and with a button I can turn them. I can turn them all off like that. So that's the beauty of it. So I'm not um, I'm not doing a massive tap dance up here. I can just concentrate on playing and emptying the band as well so so yeah these are my individual loops here and these are my combinations that are programmed 
So once the song's finished, I'll go to the next song, which is Mighty to Save. I'll just bank up and the song is ready to go. So again, you know, the bridge, I've got a clean and rhythm sound. At any moment, I can have a kill my, kill my sound to a dry sound or hit an ambient sound, which, like I said, changes the, the delay types, changes the, the reverbs, brings in various different pedals to achieve that sound. Um, and then I'll just go back to whatever sound I'm using for the next part of the song. Is my volume pedal here, and this controls the, um, the volcano that's um, sitting in the rack by expression. It's great, um, just a Dunlop uh, Volume X pedal, which is great. And my old Ernie Ball volume pedal that I use, this controls my delay amount. So at any setting that I have, I'll click a button, it's got my preset delay amount that I use for that song, but at any time I can back it off or increase it. So that's pretty cool. Um, Tuna, and this is a little uh, junction box that sends MIDI, power, audio, everything back and forth. Um, that's essentially the ring on stage. So um, I'm gonna have a look at the amps. The amps are out the back. <laughs> All right, let's go look at the amps. This is Paul, and he's our guitar tech. Brilliant hey, guitar tech for a drummer, man. <laughs> he's awesome. And um, this is where we keep the amps out here. So those two amps that you saw on stage, the dummy amps, they did live up here, but now they're on stage to give me a false sense of security, like I said. Um, but these are my amps here, Matchless and the Vox. So I'm running them both pretty clean and getting um, most of my drives um, from the rig up there. But they're set at a level where, where with all my pedals off, they're clean. But if I hit the guitar really hard, it'll just push it enough to break up. And so I really like the breakup of these amps. Um, EL84 tubes, they just, they work for me, they give me the sound that I want. I run them both on at, at all times, so I don't have like a, like a dry and a wet amp or a clean and a dirty amp. They're both on all the time, they're both set pretty much at the same volume. They just sound different enough to give me a good stereo image. And um, yes, I run everything at the same volumes, all my stereo effects, everything here. They're hard panned left and right in my ears and um, I think similarly out front of house as well. And uh, all my, my stereo effects come from my delays uh, and my modulations and my reverbs. So I try to create like a wide, a wider sound. I'll, I'll spread the delays as wide as possible, put a bit of a stereo modulation on it just to give it that weird and um, this is where they come in and the good thing about having it all the way back here is that we can crank them up really loud and get a really nice tone and as you can see a couple of 57s on them um, and that's at the back of the amp we're running these as well so these are the palmers the pdi 9s uh the these the like um like a junction box type thing they um they take the the split before it gets to the speakers and send that straight into the PA. So um, Starkey at front of house can actually choose whether he wants to use, I, I guess, the preamp sound that he'll get from the XLR or the mic sound, and he can blend them accordingly. And we've got them both on um, both amps here. So essentially I'm taking five lines into the system. So two on each, so this the mic, this on this amp, the mic and the center dry. Perhaps a little greedy, some may say, but um, I'm not complaining. <laughs> um, there you have it. That's pretty much the rig for the tour. Hope you enjoyed that.